this is Mike Check 95 with my cohort. Orphan Joker! And new room setting, new house. Because we recorded the first three at the other house three months ago. We should have gotten the other two done two, three months ago, but I procrastinated and nah. Yep. Um, Jurassic Park! We are the world continuing one. Jurassic Park week. But the world one. With the new trilogy starting with Jurassic World. The Hypnosis. Chris Pat. Chris Pratt. Cool. The park is officially cool. open and. A freak accident happens while the Indominus Rex breaks out and terrorizes everyone. It's up to Owen and Claire and a bunch of other people to stop it from basically killing everything in sight. Critics rate this film a 7.1 out of 10. Audience rate this film a 7.8. The budget of this film is $150 million and they box office back $1.670 billion, which if I remember at the time, this was basically record-breaking for the amount of money it got back. It's crazy, but it's also 100% understandable because people haven't watched it. Like the the, the build-up for this movie was so insane. Oh yeah. Oh, I yeah. mean, it, people have been stoked about Jurassic Park back when it was a book, and it did the theme park and yeah, all this crazy stuff, and so people were like super excited. Oh, no yeah. wonder it got so much because. Wasn't it? Did you like work at the theater at the time? Whenever I worked at the drive-in uh, movie theater, for some of you viewers that know that I used to work at the drive-in back in 2015, I started working there the summer that this film came out, and there was four different screens at that drive-in. Rest in peace, I-70 drive-in. They tore it down. The big main screen was in front of the concession windows, so whenever we would get done serving the customers and everything, after I've already seen the film by myself at least three times, I would stand by the big window and just sit there and watch the movie. Every single day for five days a week. I actually, the first time I watched it, I watched it at summer camp with a bunch of guys, and it was funny because there was a guy named Rick, and he was a ranger, and so when he's like, Who's that? We all yelled, It's Ranger Rick! in the theater. <laughs> and everybody looked at us and we're like, We don't care. We're a bunch of goofy summer camp staff. Leave us alone. I'm going to share some comments with this film with this film that I have written down as I went on. This film is set 22 years after the events of the first film, Jurassic Park. This film is also strictly or basically focusing on the callbacks of the first film, minus maybe a couple things here and there. But for the most part, it focuses on the first film, which made people think that they were ignoring the events of two and three which we'll get to that when we get to Fallen Kingdom. I'm not confirmed yet because it's redacted in the engine files that you look up in, on research and websites that help explain the backstory and the lore of Jurassic Park, but it's, it is theorized by a, by a bunch of fans that the Spinosaurus is actually the first hybrid and not the Anonymous Rex because they were doing a lot of scientific uh, projects 10 years before the events of Jurassic Park and the lore, Freak accident happened, everything started getting destroyed and eaten or whatever, so they abandoned Isla Sorna, moved to Nublar, started the park of Jurassic Park in the first film, and here we are now. And the fans might get mad at this statement, but in the movie they literally say all of these are hybrids, so I mean, technically the first hybrid they're was all the first hybrids, hybrid, but so this, the Donimus was a hybrid of actually yeah. two dinosaurs put together, yeah. so that's what they meant. It's uh, not filling in the gaps, it's an actual... You know, we're trying to make some sort of new thing. The Patasaurus scene where Owen is petting it as it is slowly succumbing to its death is actually the only animatronic scene. I'm not sure if it's the same guy or individual who did the animatronics for the first Jurassic Park film, but if it is, and it might put it in right here, this is the dude. If not, then this is the dude who did it. Going back to the callbacks I mentioned earlier, the original park was actually in the middle of Jurassic World and they built the rest of it around it to kind of like, I guess, forget the events of the first film, even though it's like, that's why it's, it's a restricted area when the kids went in there. This is the only callback to Jurassic Park 3, but the uh, skeletal structure that Rexy breaks through is actually the resemblance of a Spino. So for all you anti-Spinosaurus fans out there that hate the Spinosaurus in Jurassic Park 3, there you go, There's there you go, you can yell and say, fuck you to the Spino for that. Also, he said Rexy, so I didn't know until it was mentioned, but the T-Rex that shows up in the end is actually supposed to be the original T-Rex from the first film. Mm, you can tell by the scars. The scars on its neck from the raptors in the first film and everything. Yes, yeah, so it's not just, when I watched it, I thought it was... I thought it was either Mama from the second or the baby. Something that I thought was funny 
it, what I think is funny is that they kind of call themselves out. So in this movie, they mentioned that in order to keep the park alive and get more money, uh, and more, they have to get more attention. And by doing that, they have to make bigger and scarier things. Mm -hmm. Which is funny, because in the third Jurassic Park movie, and in this movie, they bring out bigger, scarier things, specifically to bring more attention to the movie, and to make more money. So they're literally almost making fun of themselves and calling themselves out, because they're saying, Oh, you have to have big, scary stuff or nobody pays attention. Then they insert big, scary stuff to bring more attention to the movie. Probably why it got $1.67 billion. Which, to add on to that, this film did what the third film should have done. Introduce a new dinosaur, give it all the screen time it needs. Oh, yes. Anonymous had at least half the amount of t at least half the run time of this film. Uh, the Spider only had like 12 minutes in the third film. Yes. Because the entire film had to get... Uh, Reshot. They also did an amazing job of storytelling with it. What I mean by that is, they didn't just say, big scary thing, chases people, tries to eat them. Like, you slowly get to see how creepy this creature actually is. Pros and cons. I'm actually going to do my cons first because the list is a lot shorter. My very first con, which I know is to help tell the story and everything, but if you look at it from an outside perspective and not actually pay attention to the story, it's kind of dumb. Um, apparently, danger is cooler than safety. The thought process behind the anonymous. Kids say, we want, we don't want more, more dinosaurs that from the books or whatever. We want something that looks bigger, cooler, and with more teeth. So they create the, the fucking anonymous Rex. And don't know what the fuck they're doing. Because danger is cooler than safety. Yes. But at the same time, it fits in with the plot. Because yes. it would, they, they didn't create something that was bigger, scary, with more teeth. They created something that would be no. smart enough to break out, yet killable. Which they did too good of a job because they couldn't find the damn thing. Yeah, that's not really a con for the film. I'd actually knock off on it. It's mm -hmm. just kind of like that's it's stupid common stupid, sense, yeah. but it's it's whatever. My next con, um, I did not like the Verizon Wireless plug-in. Verizon Wireless presents the Indominus Rex. Uh. That and the Mercedes. Usually this car shows like one second. The Mercedes. Every scene is Mercedes, 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 Mercedes. We're, we know, we know, we know. I'm gonna say this now, and this was something I said that really irritated me about by the time I watched the third film. I love the Raptors in this film because they are so different and so like iconic in this film, and they're like different from the other ones in the other films. They smart me, I think. But they made the same mistake as the first three films did. Jurassic Park and Jurassic World have this issue of basically glorifying the Velociraptors in this franchise. They are heavily brought into the storyline, and, like, by the time, like, when me and Krieger were watching the first three films, by the time we got to Jurassic Park, we were like, like, is every film going to be about, oh, look, a new dinosaur. Wait, here's 25 minutes of raptor time. It's like, can we see something else besides the raptors? Yeah, the raptors it's, and it's like Resident, look cool. It's like Resident Evil. Well, they have dopamine pinchers. That are zombies. It's just, it's their dumb thing that they gotta do. And it's, it's just, dumb, and it's it take points off for it, but it's, the, the new one's gonna have raptors in it. You know they're gonna have raptors gonna in have it, just because play. it's a thing. They glorify them in this film, but they actually make it to where they work in the story. Yes. In the other three films, they were just the main, one of the main antagonists. It's just, yes. I just don't like how they always focus more on the raptors, but again, it works for this story. Um, yeah. They need better phone reception in this fucking park. <laughs> yes. Or at least, uh, also the radios <laughs> don't work. Guess the radios better not better Verizon right. Wireless, AT&T, oh, and yeah. U.S. cellular towers in that place, please. Can, can we admit, it's at least it didn't have technical issues. Okay, well, my next two cons are going to be mainly focusing on an actress in this film, but I also want to make a callback to a uh, previous film that she was in, because she did absolutely horrible in the last film I saw her in versus this one. Bryce Dallas Howard, Claire, the redhead in this film, she does fantastic in this movie. Like she, it's a huge improvement from being Gwen Stacy in Spider-Man 3. <laughs> These uh, <laughs> two cons here, they're not really something I'd go, this was fucking stupid, I just thought it was hilarious. Um, the adjusting the shirt scene, it was just kind of like... It was funny. It was funny, but it's like, why? The point is, she was like, I can do this, and we're like, no, you can't. <laughs> and then the other th scene that's I've I've, jo I've jumped on the bandwagon on this, 
The scene where she's running from Rexy and her high heels. This she would get eaten. Don't also, as much. did you not see how much mud puddle? Like every everywhere, it's so wet that things are just sinking in the mud. Mm -hmm. Yet she didn't sink in the mud in her shoes. Her shoes were always clean. Okay. Yeah. So there's always two things. People when people go to watch movies, they don't realize there's a fun game you can play. You can do the product placement game, which is where products have to be placed in such a way you can see them or hear about them. It goes the same with makeup and clothing. Clothing is paid for, such as shoes, clothing, and makeup, and so you'll see people being chased through the jungle, perfect makeup, or chased through the jungle, their, their shoes are just fine. It, High heels, the product, no. You know, mud all over the car, except for the logo, so it's the same with that. And <laughs> so I guarantee her shoes are some sort of fancy shoes that some believe are like, oh, they're fancy shoes, because they were perfect in the whole movie. I'm and a second on the shoes, and she was engine. running through the jungle. Like, you guarantee she was recorded wearing, like, they recorded her in boots and CGI shoes on that last scene. Well, they did some didn't record her feet. Do, 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 do. Science time with Josh. Here we go. Okie okay. dokie. Before Just, pros, science time. Yeah, goodness. Okay, so, so we all know about the Jurassic Park bringing things back to life. We explained that in the first film. Yeah. Genetics don't work like that, but in this movie, when they talk about hybrids, like, oh, um, we put in a little bit of DNA from the cuttlefish, so it's magically able to, to uh, you know, change its skin color. That, no. And so, it, it's the same with all the different species they mentioned. Oh, it's got a little raptor in it. It's got a little of this in it. That would normally be something that it's like, I'm calling Balarkey. That's horse caca. That is ridiculousness. But, they covered their own bahookies. Because, they didn't just add a little snippet of cuttlefish and magically have it change colors. They did that on purpose. And so they covered themselves. Otherwise, that would have been a ridiculous thing. There is no way that you put just a little bit... That's like putting... A, it's like if Mike sneezes on me and I rub in the sneeze, I magically have the ability to edit YouTube videos. No. That's not <laughs> how it works. <laughs> he straight up made that thing exactly the way it was. And so they covered themselves on that science. And then pack animals. Something I was going to cut off for is the idea that the raptors turn on their alpha. That's not how alphas work, but they covered it in the end because they're like, wait a second. You're the Alpha! They also did not attack their Alpha, they just stopped listening to him. Kind of like rebellious kids, which makes sense. And when they saw him again, they're like, wait a second, you're trying to kill our guy. That's our guy. Screw you! <laughs> it's great. There was no way this park was functioning and doing well. Like, there's no way people didn't get damaged. What I mean is, if, if somebody gets a boo-boo on a roller coaster, they shut the whole roller coaster down. They get a boo-boo! Well, I've been I've been to places where the whole roller coaster's closed down because you know they're a little worried about it. There's no way you're just gonna be able to kayak next to giant creatures. Also, there was no way for them to like wrangle in the balls, which makes the no sense. Spheres. Yes, there's no way they would allow people to control those because you can't even control the little choo choo train you go on at the park. Okay, pros. The soundtrack. Cool. The casting. I I watched this film so many times. I think the casting was. Perfect. I remember when I first started watching it, I thought the two brothers were a little bit annoying, but watching it again, I'm like, okay, they, they're meant to be played off like that, and as their relationship gets better, it's another thing I'd add in right here, the relationship building between the two brothers were actually really good in this film. Like, at the first, it's kind of like, oh, the, the little kid's annoying because he's smart and everything, and the older brother is a jackass. <laughs> you kind of you kind of had an issue with the park and everything, but I put in a pro saying that, like, it was actually kind of cool to see an actual fully functional park running. It is. It had a lot of issues, but it, it was cool to actually see it work going mm -hmm. and everything. Um, it's also interesting to kind of like notice that I had to do a little bit of d digging on this one, that this film is essentially new generation versus old generation, or the other thing I would say would be is nature versus nurture, because that's like the entire theme of this. It's like one side you just want to like, they're animals. You don't want to sit there and control them. Let them do what they want. You can't control something that's that can't be contained. Versus, weaponize everything because we created them and we are their daddies. The CGI of this film was actually pretty good. For this mm. film being, probably, it's it's getting there to be about 10 years old. Surprising to say that, but this CGI was actually pretty good. I liked how uh, Owen was able to, like, basically 
come in and control the Raptors and everything because that was a new element mm -hmm. that I liked about it. And that's how I say that the Raptors work in this film, even though they're glorified. They work in this film because it's part of the story. Yeah, they're not glorified as monsters so much as they're glorified as helpers. Two cameos. Jimmy Fallon, obviously, because the Jackson oh, Spear. That is, I do not like that. And There's then, no reason for him to be in this movie. The other cameo I, I had to show to you was Jimmy yep. Jimmy Buffett. He's the secret, secret sneaky. Everyone knows he's the guy with the two martinis running away from the pterodons. This is also the very first time in the entire Jurassic Park series they they introduce the aquatic dinosaurs. They only show the mosasaur, but that's a good start. They finally did a pterodon scene right in this franchise. Stabbing. <laughs> <laughs> the pterodons at the very end of the Lost World, they're just flying around freely, whatever they want to do. Didn't make any sense because it's like, how are they? How are they going to contain them on an island that they don't? manage to take care of, but they have no way to contain them. And then the third film, there's aviaries randomly on Sorna that was somewhere else in the park, and I'm like, well, how do those pterodons in the second film break out and get free, and those ones yeah, broke out and got free because they left the gate unlocked. This one was done right because the uh, Dominus Rex was like, hey, fuck you, helicopter, kaboom. Wait, what the fuck? You have wings. Fuck you. Wait, go kill that thing. <laughs> The motorcycle and raptor scene. A lot of people that I was talking to about when they were seeing the trailers thought that was going to be one of the dumbest scenes in the movie. That turned out to be one of the coolest scenes in the well, movie. <laughs> I was super worried that when they got on the uh, four-wheeler that he was going to be driving the four-wheeler through it. I was like, no. Coll collaborating this all together, the ending fight scene and the end scene with Rexy scanning so the, scanning the uh, atmosphere around her and roaring out to the, to the mm. air saying, like, I'm the queen now. All of that was done perfectly. This film is by far better than the third one. And I would say it's better than The Lost World. This one's really tough because I love, the, I love Jurassic Park, the very first one, but I also like this film too. But I, I still want to say that the original film is still the best. I'm going to have to give this film, uh, it's probably going to sit in, sit in between The Lost World and Jurassic Park on the rating scale, and I'm going to give it a 9.2. Not perfect because of the little things here and there, that's because most films nowadays have dumb shit left and right, but 9.2 is going to be my official score for Jurassic World. I liked it. I liked it when it came out. I liked the story. It, it was great. There was funny scenes. There was awkward scenes. Great action. I loved the ending. Um, it was a little weird. I thought it was a little weird that, that like it ends with the rescue. It's the last time you see people. There's no like it would be cool. I know they didn't do it in the other ones, but like a press release saying, "Oh, the park is now officially closed." Like, like what happened to the park? I also haven't seen the second Jurassic World, which I think it may be explained in there some more. Really brought stuff back. Good callbacks. Great story, great twists, great science, uh, which is weird in a Jurassic Park movie. Great Jurassic science, I should say. Great, to clarify. great Jurassic, Jurassic science. science. Even the bad guys, like the bad guys, you, you you wanted to punch them, and the bad dinosaur. You didn't feel bad that it got ate at the end. I don't know. It doesn't have that same nostalgia feel as the original one. It doesn't. But it's better. But it's. it's I mean, better that, than the other two. I don't want the old one to taint. I'm going to give this a nine point five. Yes, because I liked it. Has great dinosaurs. Had great reintroduction to the park. Awesome casting. I love the old guy going. Who cares about stats? Are the are my people having fun? Well, they, you know, they, are are people having fun? Well, the stats say no stats. Mess are people yeah. enjoying the stinking park? That's the whole reason. Also, I have to agree. I like the idea of a fully functional park, mm -hmm. even though there's no way. There's no way that park lasted more than five days. Go watch the new one. We're going to do it. Yep. Uh, and this should be before, dropped beforehand. Before we get to that, uh, we have to get through the second of the uh, Jurassic World series. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. If it is as good as this film, or does it do the same thing as this, the original trilogy does? This is Mike Check 95 along with... Toast Kitty. He won't turn around. Mixie, come here. Toast Kitty. And oh. Orphan Joker. And we are signing out, and he's telling me to put him down. <laughs> Say goodnight to Max. Good night, Max.